Hello everyone, welcome to Weary Traveling with Jesus. Thank you to everyone who has supported Weary Traveling with Jesus. Today, November 28, 2021, all in from Bali will read a book from Catholic liturgical calendar and will read the same story. For from Mason teaching, it's about speech by Selina Hashem from DOJ Sydney South. She is communication manager for the Catholic Archdiocese of Sydney. After from Mason teaching part, let's we pray together with Pope Francis for the recovery of the world from the COVID-19 virus, follow to pray our Father and Hail Mary. Happy listening, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Supporting from weary friends make me and our team to making more interesting content. Thank you. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to Weary Traveling with Jesus channel, a channel of Holy Gospel readings available in three languages, Indonesia, English, and Italian. Now you can access the reading in Indonesia and English separately every day, and the readings in Italian available only on Sunday. We hope you enjoy it. Saint of the Day for November 20th Today we celebrate Saint Rose Philippine de Saint. Born in France of a family that was among the new rich, Rose learned political skills from her father and the love of the poor from her mother. The dominant feature of her temperament was a strong and dauntless will which became the material and the battlefield of her holiness. She entered the convent at 19 and remained despite family opposition. As the French Revolution broke, the convent was closed and she began taking care of the poor and sick, opened a school for homeless children and risked her life helping priests in the underground. When the situation cooled, Rose personally rented the warmer convent, now a shambles, and tried to revive its religious life. The spirit was gone, however, and soon there were only four nuns left. They joined the Invent Society of the Sacred Heart, whose young superior, Mother Madeline, will be her lifelong friend. In a short time, Rose was a superior and supervisor of the novitiate and the school, but since hearing tales of the missionary work in Louisiana as a little girl, her ambition was to go to America and work among the Indians. At 49, she thought this would be her work. With four nuns, she spent 11 weeks at sea and route to New Orleans, and seven weeks more on the Mississippi to St. Louis. She then met one of the many disappointments of her life. The bishop had no place for them to live and work among Native Americans. Instead, he sent her to what she sadly called the remotest village in the U.S., St. Charles, Missouri. With characteristic drive and courage, she founded the first free school for girls west of the Mississippi. Though Rose was as hardy as any of the pioneer women in the wagons rolling west, cold and hunger drove them out to Florissan, Missouri, where she founded the first Catholic Indian school, adding others in the territory. In her first decade in America, Mother Duchesne suffered practically every hardship the frontier had to offer, except the threat of Indian massacre, poor lodging, shortage of food, drinking water, fuel and money, forest fires, and blazing chimneys, the vagaries of the Missouri climate, cramped living quarters, and the privation of all privacy and the crude manners of children reared in rough surroundings and with only the slightest training in the courtesy. Finally, at age 72, retired and in poor health, Rose got her lifelong wish. A mission was founded 
at Sugar Creek, Kansas, among the Potawatomi, and she was taken along. Though she could not learn their language, they soon named her Women Who Prays Always, while others thought she prayed. Legend has it that Native American children sneaked behind her as she now and sprinkled bits of paper on her habit and came back our letters to find them undisturbed. Rose Duchesne died in 1852 at the age of 83 and was canonized in 1988. Her liturgical feast is celebrated on November 18. Reflection Divine Grace channeled Mother Duchesne's iron will and determination into humility and selflessness and to a desire not to be made superior. Still, even saints can get involved in silly situations, and an argument we heard over a minor change in the sanctuary, a priest threatened to remove the tabernacle. She patiently let herself be criticized by younger nuns for not being progressive enough. For 31 years, she hooed to the line of a dauntless love and an unshakable observance of her religious vows. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Holy Spirit, beloved of my soul, I adore you. Enlighten me, guide me, console me, tell me what I should do, give me your orders. I submit myself to all that you desire of me, and to accept all that you permit to happen to me. Let me only know your will. Amen. November 20, 2021 Saturday of the third day third week in Ordinary Time A reading from the first book of Maccabees As King Antiochus was traversing the inland provinces, he heard that in Persia there was a city called Elements, famous for its wealth in silver and gold, and that its temple was very rich, containing gold helmets, brass plates, and weapons left there by Alexander, son of Philip, king of Macedon, the first king of the Greeks. He went, therefore, and tried to capture and pillage the city, but he could not do so, because his plan became known to the people of the city who rose up in battle against him. So he retreated and in great dismay withdrew from there to return to Babylon. While he was in Persia, a messenger brought him news that the army sent into the land of Judah had been put to flight, that Lysias had gone at first with a strong army and been driven back by the children of Israel, that they had grown strong by reason of the arms, men, and abundant possessions taken from the armies they had destroyed, that they had pulled down the abomination which he had built upon the altar in Jerusalem and that they had surrounded with high walls both the sanctuary as it had been before and his city of Beth Jur. When the king heard this news, he was struck with fear and very much shaken, sick with grief because his designs had failed he took to his bed. There he remained many days, overwhelmed with sorrow for he knew he was going to die. So he called in all his friends and said to them, Sleep has departed from my eyes, for my heart is sinking with anxiety. I said to myself, Into what tribulation have I come, and in what floods of sorrow am I now? Yet I was kindly and beloved in my rule, but now I recall the evils I did in Jerusalem when I carried away all the vessels of gold and silver that were in it, and for no cause gave orders that the inhabitants of Judah be destroyed. I know that this is why these evils have overtaken me, 
and now I am dying in bitter grief in a warring land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm Response is, I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will declare all your wondrous deeds. I will be glad and exalt in you. I will sing praise to your name most high. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord, because my enemies are turned back, overthrown and destroyed before you. You rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. Their name you blotted out forever and ever. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. The nations are sunk in the pit they have made. In the snare they sat, their food is caught, for the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor shall the hope of the afflicted forever perish. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia! Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life to light through the Gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia! A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman but died childless. Then the second and the third married her. And likewise, all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise, that the dead will rise. Even Moses made known in the passage about the bush when he called Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and he is not God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. Some of the scribes said in reply, Teacher, you have answered well and they no longer dared to ask him anything. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We will be watching Affirmation Teaching by the OJCC. Disciples of Jesus Covenant Community is a charismatic community originated in Canberra, Australia. One of their mission is to teach the church's catechism which they call as the Formation Teaching. Official Weary Traveling with Jesus is collaborating with international community of DOJCC located in Canberra to include the Formation Teaching into the readings. The Formation Teaching is taken from Catholic Catechism that may inspire you and strengthen you in your daily life. It also serves as a continuous reflection that may deepen our understanding on the readings and also the Holy Gospel. Hi, my name is Selena Hashem and I'm from Disciples of Jesus in Sydney South. I've spent a large part of my professional life working in communications for the church.
Secondly, false witness and perjury. We cannot use our spoken words to bear false witness. The Catechism says, when it is made publicly, a statement contrary to the truth takes on a particular gravity. In court, it becomes false witness. When it is under oath, it is perjury. Acts such as these contribute to condemnation of the innocent, exoneration of the guilty, or the increased punishment of the accused. They gravely compromise the exercise of justice and the fairness of judicial decisions. Thirdly, detraction and calumny. These destroy the reputation and honour of one's neighbour. The Catechism again says, honour is the social witness given to human dignity and everyone enjoys a natural right to honour, to the honour of his name and reputation and to respect. Thus, detraction and calumny offend against the virtues of justice and charity. Now, this includes using words for flattery, which encourage and confirm another to act against charity or to sin. Number four is boasting or bragging. Think of how often we might do that. This is an offense against truth. Pope Francis said that those who love not only refrain from speaking too much about themselves, but are focused on others. They do not need to be the center of attention. We do not become puffed up before others. It also points to something more subtle, an obsession with showing off and a loss of a sense of reality. St. Paul says that knowledge puffs up, whereas love builds up. Some think that they are more important because they are more knowledgeable than others. God bless you and thank you. di Maria dentro l'anima mia come un balsamo scende sulle ferite e le porte Prayer to Mother Mary for the end of the pandemic We fly to your protection O Holy Mother of God in the present tragic situation when the whole world is prey to suffering and anxiety, we fly to you, Mother of God, and our Mother, and seek refuge under your protection. Virgin Mary, turn your merciful eyes towards us amid this coronavirus pandemic. Comfort those who are distraught and mourn their loved ones who have died and at times are buried in a way that grieves them deeply. Be close to those who are concerned for their loved ones who are sick and who in order to prevent the spread of the disease cannot be close to them. Fill with hope those who are troubled by the uncertainty of the future and the consequences for the economy and employment. Mother of God and our Mother, pray for us to God, the Father of mercies, that this great suffering may end, and that hope and peace may dawn anew. Plead with your Divine Son, as you did at Cana, so that the families of the sea, and the victims be comforted, and their hearts be open to confidence and trust. In the present tragic situation, when the whole world is prey to suffering and anxiety, we fly to you, Mother of God, and our Mother, and seek refuge under your protection. Protect 
those doctors, nurses, health workers, and volunteers who are on the front line of this emergency and are risking their lives to save others. Support their heroic effort and grant them strength, generosity, and continued health. Be close to those who assist the sick night and day and to priests who in their pastoral concern and fidelity to the gospel are trying to help and support everyone. Blessed Virgin, illumine the minds of men and women engaged in scientific research that they may find effective solution to overcome this virus. Support national leaders that with wisdom, solicitude, and generosity, they may come to the aid of those lacking the basic necessities of life and may devise social and economic solutions inspired by farsightedness and solidarity. Virgin Mary, turn your merciful eyes towards us amid this coronavirus pandemic. Comfort those who are distraught and mourn their loved ones who have died. Mary, most holy, stir our consciences so that the enormous funds invested in developing and stockpiling arms will instead be spent on promoting effective research on how to prevent similar tragedies from occurring in the future. Beloved Mother, help us realize that we are all members of one great family and to recognize the bond that unites us so that in a spirit of fraternity and solidarity we can help to alleviate countless situations of poverty and need make us strong in faith persevering in service constant in prayer Mary consolations of the afflicted embrace all your children in distress and pray that God will stretch out his all powerful hand and free us from this terrible pandemic so that life can serenely resume its normal course to you who shine on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope do with and trust ourselves O clement O loving O sweet virgin mary amen our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. 
Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Mother Mary, and Saint Joseph, forever. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who have most need of your mercy. May through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and the prayers of Our Lady, we will all be freed from the curse, filled with joy, love, and receive the blessings of Abraham, which God blessed in all things. Exaltation, health, the ability to endure suffering and still bear fruit, prosperity, victory, humility, and favor of God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. If you have an adventure with Jesus, please send to our team your audio 
video or lettering on email weary traveling with Jesus at gmail.com. Thank you. Dear brothers and sisters, those are the readings for today. We hope you enjoy it and see you again tomorrow from Weary Traveling with Jesus. Goodbye.